At Lincoln Recruitment Specialists, we know what it's like to recruit the big players for the best positions. And we understand the satisfaction that comes from helping to shape a winning team. As two of Ireland's top sportsmen, we put Paul Flynn and Ian Madigan together to get some of their thoughts on the key values that help shape a winning team. Preparation for big games for me is, is, is really important. Um, I suppose when, when you go out into the field, whether it be in a semi-final of an All-Ireland, first game of championship or even, even in a league game, and you kind of you know that you've got the work done, you can kind of trade off that experience and that, that training then when you're going into it, when you, when you go into battle, because you know there are doubts that creep in maybe 10 minutes into a game when you haven't got your first win, or you feel like you've never trained before, but if you just keep telling yourself, look, that you've got the training done, you've done the, 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 the hard yards in the pre-season or whatever, and you're, you're sharp, so just, you kind of, kind of get you through that maybe initial period, and then when, when the game comes down to maybe the last few minutes, you know you have more in the tank. Getting, I think getting your mind right is, is crucial as well. So uh, for me, I'd be you know make sure I meet with Andy McNulty before a big match and um, talk to him about anything that was playing on my mind. So uh, then when it got to the game, I'd know that I've you know ticked the, bo the box and my body's ready mentally. I'm you know in a good place to play the game, and um, then you just go out and do it. Anything strange? I like to change my laces uh, every time before a big match. Of had nightmares a few times of you know just before a match tying up the boots and the, the, the laces breaking in your hand. I always leave from my parents' house, so like I don't live there anymore now. But like it's just paramount that I leave from there, like you know, in the morning of a game. I always sit beside James McCarthy on the bus, and that just kind of organically happened. I don't know because we, we, we just we, we ended up sitting beside one another. But now it's like, geez, where is James? He's like you know, kind of way, like <laughs> I need him. Like it's like me rock from before a game. And more and more now what you find is that like we have leaders in every every position of the field like you know the guys who are making inter-county ranks now like are all leaders in their own clubs so that they, they, they need to bring that leadership quality with them to, into the inter-county setup so we have leaders all over the field yeah like similar to the football like the coach is the, the probably the most important you know lays out what he, what he wants to do and train and what the game plan is um, but as the week goes on he's looking to hand it back to the players and uh, the last training session of the week is always the captain's runs when the coach just steps back and um, the, the captain would take the session and it's just really a, it's one of those ones where you're just fine tuning things, going through your plays and you know the, t the two main leaders that, that I've had is you know Paul O'Connell as captain of Ireland and uh, one of the big things that he, he believed in would be um, you know just trying to relax the players and just getting them to focus on their own job and once you do that you can trust the guy either side of you. Luke Fitzgerald is he's my, he's my roommate at the moment so I'm keeping up with him for the last eight weeks but uh, he's just said to me um, it's about two years ago he goes look if you just go out and just do the basics well um, it will stand you really well you just have to go out and facilitate the players around you. One of my key the key areas I needed to work on like a couple of years back was my shooting and I remember like probably 2011 now, 2010, uh, Bernard Brogan came out with me and he was, he was, he was giving me um, advice on, on kicking and stuff like that, you know, and I suppose he didn't have to do it, and I suppose, you, know, you might call it leadership or call it whatever, but, um, you know, he, he was just the tools and he, he was helping me with, with my kicking and, and, you know, it improved tenfold. Obviously he did a lot of work on it as well, but it's just, you know, things like that, like they're unseen things, that they're only doing it for, you know, for their teammate or for the better of the team that would, would go unnoticed, like, you know. Uh, for me, growing up, um, you know, I would have had a few different mentors, but uh, no one better than my older brother, David. Uh, he was three years older than me, and you know, like any younger brother or older brother, you always look up to him, and you're always looking to compete with him. And uh, it was a, you know, it was a good gap that he was always better than me, so I was always striving to, to, to keep up with him. He, uh, he's without without doubt the the coach who's demanded the highest standards of me, and. Um, I have memories of you know coming back from school at uh, nine o'clock at night, having done night study and going out and passing in the you know the the, the rain and the wind and uh, no matter how hard I threw the ball or how accurate it, it, it never seemed to be good enough and um, I'm the kind of person who who needs that you know if he was if he was patting me on the back the whole time you know I probably would have lost interest and um, you know even still now it's uh, it's his text message before a game that you know would psych you right up and. The, the one you get after the game is kind of like, oh, you feel like you've done a good job if you get a good one off him because he's a tough guy to please. 
when I was probably my transition period from minor or even under 16s in the club to, to the senior ranks. The senior uh, coach at the time was a guy called Tom McKittrick and he brought myself and another guy um, when we were first year minor onto the senior panel. And it kind of was a big transition and the senior team at the time were going well in Fingalians and you know, I always get exposure to playing with senior, senior lads, I was only young. And uh, I, think it, I think it kind of toughened me up a bit, like, you know, and it kind of it blooded me into that, into that, like, you know, much more physical game, and, you know, you, you, you know, you don't have much time on the ball and stuff like that. So that was a big transition period. Best piece of advice I ever received, I actually got it too late because it was too late for me, but I always tell, I always pass it on, like, you know, <laughs> so uh, it was a guy, we had a guy over who was a coach from, uh, he coached, he was an Australian coach, but he coached, like, in Aussie Rules and rugby, you know, multi sports over there. But he was saying, um, and, I, and I say it to everybody now, if I go to a camp or I'm speaking to young, younger, younger guys, um, he says, when you're younger, play as many sports as you can, up to around the age of 15, 16, and uh, just, just explore them all. And then when you go and specialise in whatever sport you go and specialise in, you bring little bits of nuggets of information and skills and you know, things from each of the sports to your specialised sport. When I was in, um, in third year in Black Rock, we had a coach, Frank Mackin, and he said, uh, practice doesn't make perfect, uh, perfect practice makes perfect. And he just changed the way I trained and uh, gave it a different focus. So he wouldn't let you go out and, and um, just pra practice past and just firing at each other. He won a set process and that you'd be working to a certain technique. And he brought that in then to, to my place kicking and, and my kicking out of hand. And um, it just kind of re really gave me a focus and that had a knock on effect to how I, what I was doing in the gym. I played, played rugby for the love of the game, you know, when I went to, when I was growing up uh, in primary schools, you know, with tennis, golf, Gaelic football, rugby on the Sundays in, uh, in Old Belvedere, and um, then when I went to Black Rock, it goes from being, you know, playing rugby once a week to playing, a, you know, training, f you know, four days a week and then playing a game on a Wednesday, playing a game on a Saturday, and it's everything that everyone talks about in there, and, um, you know, it's, it's a kind of environment that you, you just want to be part of the rugby team when, when it's the main focus of the school. So I just engrossed myself in it and on top of those sessions I did, you know, done, kicked in the morning before school and um, just loved it, done rugby camps in, in, in the summer and, um, you know, that kind of gave me the, the realisation that, you know, I could, uh, could make a living in this and um, it was only really when I was probably about 17 or 18 that, um, I kind of chase that dream really hard. For me, it's all about passion. Like, you know, that's the reason I, I, I kind of play play um, Gaelic football. Like the, to go out there, like and play in front of whatever eighty thousand people, even if there's ten thousand people there, uh, with the Dublin jersey on your back. You know, it, it just it, it does such history in it. Like you know, and it's 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 built on passion and pride uh, of, for your for for Dublin, uh, for your club. But also for your family as well, like you know. So you're representing, like for, for me, that's that's what I'm representing, and uh, you know, I see the joy it brings people around you and stuff like that every game and, and all the fans and things. So, you know, it's a privilege to, to get the chance to, to wear the jersey. So, um, you know, it, it's easy for me to have passion, passion every time I go to play. Mm -hmm.